Hi, my name is Mark May, and I am a part-time online student at the Flatiron School. Current program that I'm participating in is the Full Stack Development Program. And as part of the second project requirement, the project is created using Sinatra, and the name of the project is Sinatra Comic Books. So to get started, I am in my Git repository, and if you're interested in using the program, you're going to fork Sinatra underscore comic books to your repository. And once you have done that, then you can simply click on clone or download and copy the link. And what we're going to do in a new terminal session is create a directory. So right now I'm in our, my home directory. So we're going to make a directory and we are going to place it in code projects Sinatra. And then we're going to change our directory to code projects Sinatra. And from here, we can issue our get clone command. And we will paste in the link. And then we will change our directory to uh, comic books to Sinatra underscore comic books, which is the name of the project. And if we just do a quick directory listing, okay, there are our files. So, I'm not going to assume that the database is clean. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to perform a rake, db drop to actually clean the database. The second thing we're gonna do is there is a seed file that will allow us to get started with this Sinatra project. So we're going to break the, the actually we're, we're going to create a migration first, excuse me. So uh, rake db migrate. Great. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to issue a rake db seed command. And that should seed the database to get us started. So if there's any questions about this process in the readme, there is information about getting started with the setup, what the requirements are uh, as far as uh, gems are concerned, and also the directory structure and uh, information about migrating uh, the tables over and seeding the database. So you can refer back to the readme. The seed uh, information in the database is going to use a username of GI Jane with the password of GI Jane, um, the same as her uh, username will be the password. While that's not recommended for the sake of expediency, that's how we're going to handle this. So if we go back 
to our terminal and we issue a shotgun command. And then we open up our browser. And we are using Google Chrome for this example. And if we type in local, and it'll be localhost 9393. And we get a welcome screen. So the project utilizes Sinatra, as I mentioned before. And what I've decided to do was to use Sinatra to create a comic book listing. One of the project requirements is that we have to create user accounts. And the second requirement is that we have to perform full CRUD on a user account. So that user has to have the ability to create a comic book listing, to read a comic book listing, to update a comic book listing or edit, and to delete a comic book listing. Uh, finally, each user is only able to perform CRUD actions on their own account and not on another account. So with the seed data that we have set up, we're going to go and we're going to test a few things. We're going to try to sign up a user that already exists in the database. So when we click sign up, and we're going to use the GIJ GI, excuse me, GI that's Jane. And then GI Jane's email address is GI Jane at abc123.com. And again, that information can be found in the README. And we're just going to copy GI Jane's email and use that as the password. So again, we are in the sign up uh, page. And what should happen is that the application should let us know that GI Jane already exists, so we can't sign her up again. User account already exists, please sign up for a new account. So this prompts us to either create a new user account or to log in using an existing account. So we're going to log in. And we're going to put in GI Jane's email. And again, we are going to use her email address as her password. And on the index page, welcomes GI Jane, and it shows a listing of three comic books that were actually seeded um, into the database. So we're going to select the first one. We're using All Star Wars just for the sake of simplicity and also for the sake of being able to keep track of what type of comic book each user has listed. So we'll pick the first, comic book listing, which is Star Wars. And here on the show page, we have the title of the comic, subtitle, the publisher of that particular comic, Marvel Comics Group, the year of that comic, 1980, issue number, cover price, 
condition of the comic. And then this is a neat little link that will take you over to my comic shop to actually show you uh, not only a picture of the, or a cover of the comic, but the actual series of comics that are in that collection. And also uh, the fair market price or value of that particular comic, if you're interested in selling it, or if you're interested in buying a comic in that particular series, the pricing is listed as well. So if we go back to the show page, show page also gives us an option to add a comic book, to edit the comic book, to delete the comic book, to go back to the original list of comics or to log out. So as part of the CRUD, we've already shown that um, we have the ability to create a new comic. So if we click on add a new comic book, and it's asking us for various fields. There are two forms of validation that are used in this program. The first type of validation is actually at the form level. So um, the forms will not allow you to uh, move on or to uh, submit to the application without filling out these forms these form fields. So for publisher, uh, if we put in DC Comics, again, we're adding a new comic book, year 2000 we'll put in. Let's put in um, issue number 58, and we're gonna put in a price of 60 cents. The title will be Wonder Woman, Subtitled, The New Adventures of Wonder Woman. Uh, condition, very good. And then the link, um, we're just gonna put in any old link at this point. And then if we hit submit, it will take us back to the index page. And shortly you will see there is the fourth entry, Wonder Woman, The New Adventures of Wonder Woman. So if we click on that particular comic, and this time around, instead of creating a new comic, let's edit this particular comic, Wonder Woman. And while it's highly unlikely that she will change DC comic label, we'll put in Marvel. And furthermore, we'll put in a condition of excellent for the condition. And when we hit submit, change for this particular comic has taken place. Now it's Marvel instead of DC and the condition of the comic is excellent. So we have shown that we can update a particular comic book listing. Now we're going to go ahead and delete this listing, which will once again take us back to the index page. And there should be three comics now instead of four. And Wonder Woman no longer exists as a listing. So we have shown that we can perform full CRUD, create, read, update, and delete a particular listing. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to log out and we're going to create a new user.
So as I mentioned, there are two forms of validation. There's a validation on the client side, which actually looks for user input in the form and whether or not that user input exists. The second form of validation is on the application side, and we will see that in a moment. So there are no other users as it stands now in the database other than GIJ. So if we go to login, and we try to put in an email of Mark, and we'll say that Mark's email is mark at abc123.com. And we use that same email address as a password. Once again, highly uh, recommended. The validation that is going to take place on this side is actually on the server, on the application uh, to be specific. And it's stating that user does not exist. Please sign up. That's exactly what we expect. So at this point, the uh, prompt gives the user an option. Maybe the user input the user name, the email, or the password incorrectly. So it gives the user the option to be able to go back in and try logging in again. Or for the user to actually sign up. So in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and sign up. So it's Mark, it's the first name. And we're going to put in um, a dummy email, an email that is not valid. So if we just put in Mark, and then let's just put in Mark as a password. The other form of validation that was previously mentioned um, is a validation on the client side. Um, the validation is actually utilized by taking advantage of some of the capabilities in Bootstrap. And so if we hit submit, it's telling us that we must include an at symbol in the email address. So if we put in an at symbol and we hit submit again, there's still some information that's missing. And saying mark at is incomplete. So if we did one, two, three, the same thing will happen. Well, at least it should happen. Um, but the validation for the email um, is telling us that it's not a correct email. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a mark at ABC123. And then we're going to use well, let's try this again mark and then mark abc at one two three and then i'm going to copy that and paste that into the password and we're going to sign this user up And it's telling us that there are no comics listed. So we're going to create a few comics. And we'll just put in a few comics really quick. So Harvey Ward. And I do have a cheat sheet here with some URLs that will become uh, helpful with completing these forms. So Richie Rich, Harvey World. So it's issue 212, 1982. So 1982, issue 212. Uh, the cover price is 60 cents. Title is Richie Rich. The subtitle is The Poor Little Rich Boy. 
condition of the comic is good. And if we go back to our cheat sheet here, we're going to copy in this URL. And we will save this. So now we have one listing. Here we'll add a second comment. Second comic is a DC comic. And we'll take a look again at our cheat sheet. We have Shazam. So it's issue one, 1986. Cover price is 75 cents. It is Shazam. And it is the new beginning. Condition excellent. And let's copy over the URL for Shazam. <clears throat> and we'll save that. Right now we have two listings. Can I add one more listing just for the heck of it? And this third listing is Batman. And so while we're here, we'll copy the URL. We'll try to copy the URL. Okay, and it's DC 300-1978. So it's DC Comics, 1978, issue 300, cover price, 60 cents. Batman, And it is the 300th issue of Batman. We're going to categorize it as good. And we'll paste in the URL and we'll save it. So once again, with creating a new user account, we've clearly showed that we have the ability to create a comic book listing. And there's the third listing. So if we wanted to uh, click on, say, Richie Rich, and let's just simply edit Richie Rich. And instead of a cover price of 60 cents, let's make it a cover price of $1. And we'll say that the condition of the comic is excellent. And we'll say that Richie Rich changed publishers over a contract dispute because Richie Rich wasn't making enough money. So we'll change it to Marvel.
And there is our change, Richie Rich, Marvel Comics, cover price a dollar. And condition of comic was excellent. I misspelled excellent. So the final requirement of the Sinatra project is that a user cannot be able to uh, perform CRUD functions on another user's account. So what we're gonna do at this point is keep in mind that GI Jane was our seed data and GI Jane had originally three comic book listings and those comic book listings were Star Wars and the ID on those comic book listings in the database were one through three and then we added a fourth comic book that we in turn deleted. So if we simply log out of Mark's comic book listings. So we're back to the login. If we try to type in comics and then one, And that's not what we wanted to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to line 393. We're going to go back and we're going to log back in. Okay. So let's log back in to uh, GI Janes. Actually, we'll make it simple. We'll log back into Mark's. Mark going to paste in Mark. So because G.I. Jane had the first three listings of comic books, what we want to see is whether or not Mark can view or edit any of G.I. Jane's comics. So if we click on Richie Rich, Richie Rich is the, should be the fifth listing, I believe. Okay, fourth actually. Okay. So if we go in and we try to select one of GI Jane's, which would have been one of the first ones in the database, you should not be allowed to do that. And see, it takes us back to our original listings. So if we did Comet 2, which is also one of GI Jane's, same thing. Okay. If we picked uh, Shazam, and doesn't matter which comic book listing we're in here, but if we want to once again take a look at one of G.I. Jane's, but this time, Look at her third uh, listing and try to edit it. Should take us back to Mark's original listings, which it does. So that demonstrates that a user can only perform CRUD actions on their own account. So if we log out, and we're going to very quickly log into Jane's just to prove that she is unable to view or perform CRUD actions on Mark's account. So we will log in. So 
GIJ and her password. So Mark's listings were four, five, and six. So if we just pick any one of Jane's, and we try to change that to four, which is one of Mark's listings. Takes you back to Jane's listing. So Jane is unable to take a look at Mark's listings. So if we try to edit one of Mark's listings, and I spelled edit wrong. System won't allow you to do it. And one last thing, we'll perform the same option for comic six, which again is one of Mark's listings. This time around, we will issue a delete. Yeah. And actually, what we'll do is Let's select one of Jane's listings. It'll make it easier. What the root does is it actually uh, redirects the user back to the index page. So it'll be a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So we clicked on one of Jane's comics. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna change that three to a six. And we're going to try to delete one of Mark's comics. And the application did not allow us to do that because Jane does not have access to Mark's list of comics. So that is it. That is the program Sinatra comic books. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and the information. You can reach out on GitHub to find out more information about the program. You can also take a look at the blog, which is linked in the README section of GitHub. Thank you for watching.